talk a little bit about the GT3, yeah? Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Gabe, if you're new here, and uh, today we're going to be reviewing my 2015 991.1 GT3. Um, I've had it for two years now, 36,000 miles. I bought it second hand, and it has a total of 46,000 miles on it. And uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk about everything that I've experienced and encountered during that time frame, and hopefully help you guys make a better decision when you're considering buying one of these cars. So let's get into it. Um, this has the 3.8, which um, is known to have engine failure, and uh, this one's been no different. This one actually had engine failure happen on track. Um, I actually made a video of it where I have it on tape. Um, wasn't anything crazy, wasn't like a big boom or flames or nothing like that. It just started misfiring at high RPMs. And I took it to the dealership the next day, and uh, within three weeks, I had the car back in my possession with a new motor. And uh, one thing I did notice is the power was significantly, uh, it was down on power significantly um, with the old motor. And with the new one, when I pulled off the lot and got on the freeway, it was like, damn, like this thing's got some punch to it now. Um, and I think it's just what happens is um, it starts to lose power over time and you just don't realize it. And uh, yeah, I think that's what happened. So got the new motor in it. There's no breakdown or sorry, uh, break in period. Uh, you can just head straight to the track and that's what I did and last year probably every other weekend I was at the track with this car putting in probably anywhere from 30 to 40 laps every track event and uh, just beating the hell out of the car and, and no issues at all no hiccups um, yeah it's been nothing short of a dream honestly it's this is my first Porsche it won't be my last and uh, yeah, I just love it so much. So uh, I'm going to talk about the spec of the car and the mods that I've done to it. And uh, then we'll talk about things that I dislike and then the things that I love about this car. So um, this car is pretty bare in spec. Um, no front axle lift, no PDLS, had the sofa base seats, um, no Apple CarPlay, no Bluetooth audio, no Premier sound literally nothing except for chrono sport chrono package and uh for anything other than gt3 sport chrono package just gives you the ability to uh have launch control and also you have the the clock in the center on the dashboard uh, on the gt3s all gt3s have um launch control so it doesn't really matter you're just paying for the clock and uh yeah so pretty bare spec um but Honestly, I would have it no other way. It's everything to do, the G GT3s are everything to do with the driver's experience. And uh, pretty much you're paying for the motor and the handling of the car itself and the brand itself as well. Can't deny that, but um, like those are the, the main things that you buy a Porsche for a GT3. And uh, yeah, it's been great. Um, mods that I've done in the car, MCS two-way suspension, GMG thrust arm bushings, uh, what else? Dundon race headers, Dundon crack pipe, M engineering stage two tune, M engineering PDK tune, which I'll touch on in a bit. It's amazing. Um, the roll cage, the harnesses, the lightweight bucket seats. I actually bought those from uh, AMX Performance out in I think it's Poland. Uh, they had some off of a wrecked GT3, so they're a Euro spec seat, which there is differences to. Uh, a KMP steering wheel, it's wired for an AIM, it's got the BBI uh, bucket angle adjusters, so that way, uh, or no, sub harnesses, and then the TAG Motorsports uh, angle adjusters kind of sit you back a little more, that way when you're wearing a Hans and a helmet, you're not sitting like upright like this, you're in a normal, normal position, so uh, BBS 
These are E88s, but I, mine are E07s. I'm just borrowing a buddy's right now, my buddy Jason's. Uh, these actually used to be my old set. Um, you guys remember back in the day when I got E88s. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much it, uh, honestly. And, and that's pretty much all you need. That's, that's it. Exhaust, suspension, buckets and harness, and you're set to go to the track and tear it up. Uh, also, brake pads. Uh, DS-111s in the front, Ferrodos, and then Ferrodo DS-312s in the rear. It's kind of like an offset um, going on there, but I like it. It's good. Works fine on track, and uh, I've never had any issues with the brakes, which uh, is pretty insane because I've actually never changed a brake fluid. I know it's pretty bad to say, but I've never changed a brake fluid, and um, I've never boiled a brake fluid. It's never got to that point yet. Uh, soon I'll change it. I've just kind of been lazy to get around to it. Uh, but I think that's just a testament to how good the brakes are on the car. And the car also uses uh, Castrol SRF from factory. And that's my first time actually using Castrol SRF in any car. That stuff is really top notch. It used to be all about Motul 660 and I still do like that product. Um, but SRF is like another step above that honestly. And uh, I'll probably just keep that in the car. Um, Let's see, things I dislike about the car. Uh, it's kind of hard because everything I'm gonna tell you right now is things that I've done to the car that you won't receive a, a brand new GT3 or, or a used GT3 from the dealership like this, right? So you're never gonna buy a GT3 from the dealership with an exhaust. Um, and that's the first thing I dislike about my car. It's a reason why I dislike it and also why I love it. Uh, so I have a, a race headers with crack pipe with a crack pipe and uh, it's extremely loud guys really fucking loud like unbearable on the street uh, and it's a ticket magnet I've been pulled over so many times for either that or not having a front license plate just a bunch of stuff man cops really just they really like to go after guys with um, you know with a loud nice car honestly and uh, yeah, I've been got a couple times now. It sucks, um, especially here in California. I know there's a lot more of other states that are a lot more lenient, but uh, here in California, especially in Orange County, they're just dickheads about it. And uh, yeah, so um, I also love it because on track, it's fucking amazing. It's the best sounding exhaust by far. There's no comparison. Your JCR doesn't sound as good as mine. Your Acropodic does not sound as good as my exhaust. Doesn't matter what the fuck you got. It doesn't sound as good as race headers in a crap pipe. I guarantee it. Like, if you've heard it in person, you know what the fuck it is, and you know it's the best sounding exhaust. Um, hands down, bar none. Like, no, there's not even like a, a room for conversation, honestly. Um, so, uh, the MCS suspension is, I mean, like, it's MCS, so it speaks for itself and it doesn't disappoint. It transformed the way the car felt. Um, it honestly felt like the weight of the car was actually more distributed, and I know that's not true, right? You're, you're just putting coilovers on, you're not shifting weight. But the way the springs and the shocks are dampered really make it feel like the weight has been moved forward on the car. And uh, for that, MCS makes a hell of a product and, and can't give them like enough praise so uh back to the things i dislike which it's hard because there's really not any the only thing i was really going to tell you guys is like the attention it gets from law enforcement for different things right so uh i've been pulled over for the exhaust i've got a couple tickets for exhaust i've got a couple tickets for a cracked windshield for and the cracked windshield is just when you're on track and you follow somebody it's easy to get a rock chip right in the windshield so um that's where those come from um, no front plate. I mean, we live here in California where it's state law where you have to have a front plate. And honestly, I think it's bullshit. And I'm not going to drill any holes in this car. I'm not going to do that at all. So I'll just eat the, eat the fine and that's, that's it. I'll be done with that. Um, and then I actually have one ticket for low tread, low tire tread wear. And, uh, it was with, uh, Goodyear Supercar 3Rs. So if you guys are familiar with that tire, brand new, it's already at like the minimum tread tread, uh, tread depth. And um, yeah, this cop wrote me a ticket for that shit, not knowing what the tire was. 
I tried explaining to him like these are a factory tire that come on a factory car, the, the Camaro ZL1. Um, and he just didn't know. So he also had me pop the hood, thinking that the hood is where the engine was. And uh, so clearly he didn't know what the fuck he was doing or talking about. And uh, yeah, that is what it is. Um, that's really the only negative that comes with owning a, a nice car with a, a good sounding exhaust is just the attention that you get from law enforcement. Um, it just sucks, but yeah. On to the things that I love with the car, which there's a long list, but I'm just gonna kind of narrow it down to three. Uh, number one, and I think the what everyone would say, every owner would say or should say, is the motor, the 9,000 RPM redline, the sound it makes. It's just amazing. Uh, every single day, like I either get goosebumps, I get adrenaline rush, or my heart starts pounding hard as fuck when I'm driving this car and redline it. It's just, it's crazy. And if you don't feel any type of way or emotion about it, like, are you even human? Like, I, I can't, I don't, I don't understand how you would not feel any type of uh, emotion when you redline it to 9,000 RPM. It's just something that, unless it, there's another car that you've driven that does that and makes that sound, um, there's no comparison. E46 M3, no, not even close. Uh, I had one of those, like you guys know, and uh, it doesn't compare. 8200 RPMs, I've had a E92 M3, that was pretty good too with the V8, sounds amazing, but it doesn't come close to the GT3 9, 9K RPM, not at all. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing I've uh, driven it has uh, given me the same feeling, and this is by far the best car I've ever driven and owned. Uh, Number two would be how convenient it is on space with uh, for somebody who doesn't have kids. Um, me and my girlfriend have gone to the store sometimes, loaded up the frunk and with everything we needed for the week and perfectly fine, drove home and that was that. I didn't need a big ass cargo space in the back or anything like that. I didn't need to use the back uh, behind the cage. I didn't need to use anything like that. The frunk is big enough to fit everything. Um, my luggage cases when I go back to Brazil, they all fit in the Porsche. So uh, the big one is tough. The, the big one really have to finesse up front. And even then I kind of get worried driving with it. So I really don't drive with the big ass suitcase in the front, but yeah, can be done. I drove with my dog, my tools, my clothes and luggage for, for four or five days. Uh, an air mattress and some spare parts for some guys that I was meeting down in Texas for Super Lap Battle and uh, drove right back and it was perfectly fine. My dog slept on the way there, on the way back, right there in the passenger seat with a, a bed sheet over it so that way she didn't get it dirty. And uh, we got home, or we got there and we got home safely. You know, we competed as well. So um, yeah, it's a very convenient car. Uh, and then lastly, um, the reason why I love this car so much is the design of it. It's a 911, like it's classic. If you don't know what a 911 is, if you saw that car, you would know it's a Porsche at least. And uh, the design to it, so classic, so so timeless. Um, yeah, it's just like a beautiful car ever since, you know, the beginning of when they started making them. Uh, I mean, even we see like 96, uh, 964s going for, uh, above 50 grand, almost 100 grand for a base. And uh, I mean, they still look great. 993s, 996 is actually starting to catch on now. The 997 to me, in my opinion, is like the best looking 911 ever. And then the 991 is just, you know, it's really good too. So um, yeah, you just can't go wrong with a 911, whether it's a base, GTS, GT3, GT2, doesn't matter. It's they, they look all beautiful. They're all beautiful cars. So yeah, that is it. I hope I helped you guys out in some way uh, with informing you. Um, and if you have any questions, please drop it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Other than that, I'll catch you guys later.